You know, when we talk about the next quantum leap in innovation on Tech Today, I think it looks something like this. Viral sensation from a few months ago, and the team, the lovely couple behind this viral sensation, the humane AI pin that you've seen on Tech Today, is with me here at the Mobile World Congress. Imran, Bethany, what a pleasure to have you on Tech Today. So great to be nice here. To Thank you, you so much. You. Thank you for joining us. We're very excited about this conversation. But like I said, and I wasn't saying that with any form of exaggeration, this to me seems like where AI should be headed and where it's sort of headed if we want it to be AI for all, isn't it, Imran? You know, that's what we think. Um, we're, we're really excited about what it means to have a new kind of coexistence with technology, one where something like the AI pin allows you to maintain a level of presence and freedom mm -hmm. that's driven by AI that you wouldn't get otherwise if you're really using a screen-based uh, touchscreen or a keyboard or mouse. And yeah. so this allows you to have all the compute that you are used to having, but then return back to a little bit of your presence. Absolutely. And then we have to get to the product development of this particular device. I know with your keynote, which was very Apple-esque and very impressive, <laughs> and we'll get to that in a bit, but there were so many, well, use cases that came out from that. And usually when we see these keynotes of new products, even from big tech companies, there are a few well, kinks to iron out. How's it been since that keynote? Have you guys managed to really grow and evolve this particular product, Imran? We have been, actually. So there's, there's um, I think one thing that's really worth noting, as you point out, every 1.0 product always has um, you know, a green field of innovation that, that really allows it to grow into itself. And so we've, we've built this with that in mind. The operating system can be upgraded at any time. So it's not like one of those products where you have to wait a yearly cycle to yes. update, we can actually push upgrades to the device. Uh, and whenever something new is ready, a new feature comes on, we can just push it to the devices immediately. And it feels pretty great to have that in mind, but we're yeah, thinking you, a lot. You wake up and you're pinned to something new, which I think is what we expect now from yes. yeah. software and hardware. Um, we also know that people um, want to keep it for a longer time. So we need to needed to build an OS that would allow us to just constantly be making it better. That's very interesting, constantly be making it better, but you're doing this as a team, and I find that fascinating. Um, as a couple who's actually the, the powering force behind Humane AI, how does that dynamic work? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct this question to her, because you guys come with your particular skill sets, and then this uh, is, is the brainchild of just that. Yeah, and obviously it's Imran's vision, and we know nothing but working together. That's how we met, and so for us, that's our happy place. Uh, and I think one of the things that's really different about him and I is that we have a lot of respect for one another in terms of our skill sets and strengths. And we give each other the space to really own what we're great at. Um, but we also communicate all the time. And mm. I think that's something that we get a lot of practice at and is really pretty critical. And I think it's also a huge benefit. You know, when you're an entrepreneur and a founder, it can be pretty lonely. And I think for us, having one another has made it, um, especially during times like COVID that were really challenging, yeah. that to, to me was a huge, huge benefit. And times like COVID was a major chunk of when this product yes. was being developed. It's been four or five years in the making? That's yes. right. Yeah, we were essentially a COVID baby, we like <laughs> to say sometimes, um, where I think as Bethany points out, just having that dynamic uh, really helped us get through a lot of the difficult moments yeah. that any company would have just surviving COVID period, especially a new company, one that's not been established. Uh, but the, the level of um, intuition and uh, camaraderie that comes into the team that Bethany and I are to be able to lead the amazing team that we've got at Humane has been really fascinating for us. The amazing team you have at Humane, and there were a bunch of former Apple employees. You guys have also worked at Apple on some monumental launches for them over the years. And now comes the Humane Pin from, from this particular company that you've set up. But also, you know, how is Humane really structured? When we speak of, well, Sam Altman is invested yeah. in the company. Um, is that something that, that, you know, you guys benefit from a lot? Because when it comes to AI becoming ubiquitous, I think, well, ChatGPT and OpenAI really changed the game. How much of those learnings really work with what you guys are doing at Humane? You know, um, Sam's been a great supporter for us. And it's certainly, I think, when we started very, very early on, um, 2018 is when we really got going. One of the burdens that we had was actually trying to explain to the world the benefit of what we're doing. Um, you know, OpenAI and ChatGPT really helped with that problem. And it really helped people understand what the true benefit of being able to actually have 
these LLM models really do a lot of this uh, execution for mm -hmm. you. Um, and so that's been really great for us to actually uh, ride the same sort of um, wave together yeah. in yeah. that regard. And so we obviously have been working on not only um, software, but also hardware that allows you to take AI with you everywhere, as we like to say. And so it's been great in terms of uh, the camaraderie and the level of support. But we're not restricted to what you know, OpenAI is doing ChatGPT. We can benefit from the learnings at Gemini, what's happening with other LLMs as well, with the UMain pin. That's yeah, right. Yeah, one of the things that we knew really from, from the beginning was that there was a huge benefit to us building this vision as a standalone company right. um, and an independent company in the sense that we wanted to be able to leverage the best technologies out there. We knew that there were going to be many, many LLMs. And in some cases, um, in certain regions, you would be required to use certain LLMs or maybe prevented from using others. And so the power for us was going to be in building an OS and an operating system that allowed you to be flexible. And in some cases, you as a customer might want to choose or for a particular query mm -hmm. or question, we might want to route sense. you to one that's to one that's a better for one versus the other. Mm -hmm. So our OS, which is called Cosmos, is really about building a layer that Humane has developed that helps route to either the best LLM or the best service um, and also do our own processing on it uh, to, I think, end up giving the customer what they really want um, and really mm -hmm. be able to be truly global. And for us, that's one of the big reasons we're here at Mobile World Congress mm -hmm. is, is to talk about that aspect of being able to build something that's really global. And being truly global would also mean that we cannot overlook India, which must yes. potentially be a huge market for what you guys are doing with the Humane Pin. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in some ways, you can't ignore your biology, right? <laughs> and, 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 you know, for me, India is a very special place, not only because of, of that, but there's just an amazing amount of energy and an amazing amount of passion when it comes to technology. Great things are going on there, and we, we want to figure out how we can actually harness and create a lot of opportunities in, in India um, for what we're doing. And, you know, we hear a lot from people outside of the U.S. We're U.S. based only yes. right now, but uh, the number one inbound that we, can't, we get um, is from India. So it's an amazingly important market for us. Iran, I, I do want to pick your brains, Bentley, as well, on, on one piece, which is we talk so much about AI and sometimes get carried away uh, in terms of talking about innovation, product launches and stuff like that in the tech world. We're guilty of that as well in, in coverage. But it, it is imperative to talk about responsible AI to ensure that there are some safeguards in, in place. Absolutely. Now, we can't always rely on, on you know, different policy makers to come up with them. Do you think it's incumbent on big tech companies and you know, startups and, and, and younger companies such as yours to really put those safeguards in place and probably, well, set that yardstick and that parameter for the others to follow? Absolutely. You've seen what's happened with large companies that have forsaken people's trust. And you know, there's been many incidents where things have happened. We have the benefit of being able to start anew with those learnings. And so we've put a lot of those things into place. Responsible AI is one thing, but also just being able to have the right kinds of safeguards in place for your data, your privacy, your security. We've done things, as you probably have seen, uh, we've built in certain types of safeguards to make the device not only secure, but also quite transparent. Our view on data is also something that's really important. We believe that customers should own their own data and not really have anyone else being able to peruse and exploit that data as yes. well. Yes. So you have the ability to view and also uh, delete and manage all your data as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when it comes to being able to integrate the right kinds of um, uh, AIs for what they're able to do and how you can bring them in and, and just how far they can go, those, those types of things, along with privacy and along with data um, attitudes, if you will, have to be the roles of the companies that, that uh, people are engaging in. And I believe that you should be choosing your companies based on their perspective. Mm -hmm. Blockbuster products launched by you guys whilst at Apple, I mean, iPad, FaceTime and the like. But it's very interesting because we had Tim on the show as well and I spoke to him about AI. And now the, the part that they're taking, at least until now, seems to be with the Vision Pro, what we'd like to call mixed reality, but they're calling spatial computing yeah. uh, in a truly Apple-esque fashion. But what you're doing with the human AI pin, do you think this, and I know it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a biased question, but yeah. obviously this is one way forward. You do not believe that, the, that there's enough potential in mixed reality, perhaps? Is that something human could do in the future? You know, I think there's just a different path there. Um, 
we we look at what we're doing as ambient computing and and um, I think spatial or immersive computing has a very very um, amazingly potent use case. Mm -hmm. But what we're really focused on is broad consumer things that can coexist with you and actually put you back into into the world we live in versus take you out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I think I think the technology that people are exploring in spatial is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just really comes down to some of the intention and um, we're focused on, on something different. Brenda, let me ask a last question. Uh, what I want to understand and this, we got to figure out from what's happening at home as well. There's a very popular Netflix uh, film called Social Dilemma. Mm -hmm. And we've seen so many technologists and how they actually finish their shifts and how they manage mm -hmm. their, their, their daily lives away from work. You have the human AI pin. If this didn't exist and you guys didn't launch this, how do you manage to unwind and really ensure that there's a safe boundary between what's work and what's play. Yeah, I think that we have a way that we communicate to tell each other when we both need space. Uh, I think we take that space in different ways. For me, um, space to me looks like no one talking to me, total silence. Space to Imran means loud music creative energy. Hollywood music. <laughs> yes. It can Hollywood. be. It just it depends be. on the beat, I think. So. And so I think and just, meditation. Yeah, meditation, right? And I think for us it's about just constantly checking in. Yeah. We also really like to to spend time downtime when we're not working on humane doing creative things, whether it's projects in our house or we had a development project that we worked on um, with with a, a space that we own. Um, things that get us to use our hands and be creative yeah. um, together, which is something we really love and we're really passionate about, but maybe not focusing on the problems that we're solving at work. Um, and for us, I think quiet time with our family. We have a almost 17-year-old daughter, yeah. and those moments, just the three of us, are, are really special and important. So we try to make space for that every day. That is important. That is, comes from an Italian culture. I come from you know our culture. Yes. Family's huge, yeah. Uh, so we, we definitely make make sure that we get that. Yeah, we have an, an amazing support system as well around yes. us that really helps, um, and we're constantly spending time with them and keeps you grounded. And um, yeah. I think that's really important. But me, Imran, what a fascinating chat. I really appreciate catching up with you guys in Barcelona. Maybe we'll catch up uh, in San Francisco, Mumbai, or Delhi yeah. the next time. And and more power to you for what you're doing. I personally think this is the way forward. The Humane AI pin. Cannot wait to get our hands on this on Tech Today. But we've met the founders of this company. I really appreciate you guys joining us. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Bethany. Cheers. <laughs>